Hello everyone, Crimson Guy here for Extreme Beer Labs, and today on the Sonic Riders DX Workshop, we're going to be talking about some of the new changes you should be looking forward to in the upcoming patch. This won't be an in-depth breakdown or anything, we'll just be talking about some of the highlights and major coding breakthroughs, which are quite numerous, but yeah, let's just get right into it. <laughs> so, no bias here, but we're going to be starting with one of my ideas. We're going to be taking the three type granting gears, Access, Grinder, and Destroyer, and allowing them to be picked on characters of the same type. The way it works is pretty simple, actually. If you pick them on characters of a different type, say Sonic Access, it'll work just the same as before. But if you pick them on a character with the same type, say Tails Access, you can think of it as having Fly Type twice or whatever type the gear grants. Doing this will make your shortcut speed faster. For Grinder and Access, it's just a percentage increase, and for Destroyer, you get a flat plus 15 increase, including from objects that don't normally give speed, and plus 10 from dash panels. You'll also notice they look a little different on characters with the same type. That just has to do with how the game loads models. With our current knowledge, there's no way to have the models load on other characters without crashing the game, so we're just using retextured versions of Darkness, Powerful Gear, and Omnipotence respectively. Unfortunately, that's all we can work with for the time being, but who knows, if people like them, we might keep them around even after we can use the proper models. Anyway, on the topic of gears, we've given every character the ability to ride Blue Star 2, well, every board riding character, so everyone except for Eggman. It'll look different when you pick it on anyone other than Sonic, it's the BS2 replica, and unlike the other replica gears, it'll probably stick around when we're able to import the models proper, and that's just because we want to keep Blue Star 2 unique to Sonic, at least in spirit. It's also getting a pretty major buff, we're increasing its boost chain modifier from plus 5% to plus 15%, which is quite massive if you know how boost chains work, and don't worry, we'll have a video on that soon. Huge thanks to Vortigon who created the texture for this gear. It's exactly what I think in my head when I think of a Blue Star 2 replica. As far as brand new gear designs, we're going to be starting off with my favorite, which is Berserker. We've completely revamped this gear. The old Berserker effect no longer exists in Sonic Riders DX, which is pretty cool if you ask me. The new one is pretty different. It's no longer just a passive effect. Instead, now, when you're at 75% error or more, you'll enter Berserk mode. You can always tell when you're in Berserk mode, because the top part of your air gauge will be grey, and that's in both the vanilla and HD texture packs. When you're actually in Berserk mode, you'll enter a forced boost state, and you'll begin rapidly accelerating and draining air much faster than normal. When Berserk mode ends, you'll basically just be a slightly worse default gear. It might not sound like much, but Berserk mode actually completely changes the way you play the game on most stages, and it feels really good, so I hope you all try it when it comes out. The last gear I'll talk about today is Turbo Star. For those of you who haven't played previous patches and don't know, Turbo Star is a standard gear where the main gimmick is that at 90 rings you reach level 4. In 1.3 it was just simply too powerful, so we are toning it down this patch, but we're also expanding on its level 4 gimmick. Previously, level 4 only upped your boost speed, and it wasn't really a true level up. Now, you'll be getting the full experience. The game will properly acknowledge your level up with the HUD and sound effects, you'll get the air refill, you'll get the boost speed as before, you'll get extra boost duration, and drift sets. The only thing you're missing is the top speed, but let's be real, if you needed that top speed to begin with, you probably shouldn't be playing Turbo Star. So yeah, that's that for Gears. We do have a lot more changes, but I don't want to spoil everything. Now we're moving on to the stage changes, which are honestly the biggest breakthrough we've made. Starting off with what we're calling Spole, short for single player object loading. It's exactly what it sounds like. Basically, we're able to load in objects from the single player version of every stage because for some reason Sega felt the need to put less resources for more players. This will be on every stage and it really affects stages like Night Chase and the Factories. And when you combine it with the fact that now we can move all of those items, it gives us a lot more potential because we just have more items to work with. In 1.0, you won't see any changes to grind rails, but we are able to do that now, so expect that in some future patches. You'll also notice that some of the ramps are a little more forgiving. No more Moser jumps. It'll make it harder to do accidental ramp skips on ramps where that's bad, but we're still keeping it for ramps where you should ramp skip. And basically the only thing we're not able to do is modify the actual stage geometry. So just getting into some of the highlights, we're going to start off in Red Canyon. As you can see, the bottom path is actually usable now. So we've moved those dash panels that made it hard to get the grind rail, and the grind rail, it's still not faster, but you can get air from it so it's actually usable. Those dash panels have actually been moved to the mouth of the cave, and they've been boosted to plus 100 speed. But the biggest one by far is these item boxes over here. So these item boxes are exactly the same as the top path ones, the two on the left are 30 ring boxes, and the two on the right are random. 
So now gears other than legend should be viable on this stage. And even if you mess up, you'll still have an opportunity to catch back up. And honestly, I expect some gears to prefer to go bottom path. So we'll just have to see how that plays out in the meta. On digital dimension, we probably have the most noticeable changes. The hands are no more. This is possibly the most requested change that we've ever made, so here we go. This will be especially good now that Digital Dimension Skip is banned in official rule sets, and we've actually buffed the power objects down there so that power types will go bottom path on later laps. All in all, it's just a good quality of life change, but you'll still have to deal with the shifting ground. We've also added these item boxes to the end of the lap. They actually used to be behind the start line for some reason, but they weren't normally collectible. And on Digital Dimension, you can use any resources you can get. And the last thing we're going to cover is also quite a big one. As many of you know, Sky Road is one of the hardest tracks to balance, and we're really trying to push this so that it can maybe be at least a not-hated stage. By the way, a huge thank you to Aigami for making this complete visual overhaul of both Babylon Garden and Sky Road. It looks incredible. So for the general Sky Road changes, we've added two sets of item boxes that you can get now. The first set will be right before the second spiral turn, just so you can finish the lap without having to run or take the pit on most gears. The second one will be right out of the QTE. Those boxes were actually there the whole time, but they were placed in an inaccessible location, so now you'll be launched right into them and get free 10 rings. You also might have noticed we made the QTE just a tiny bit faster. It might look like it stops there, but it's actually so fast that it just breaks the speedometer. This means that the ramp skip going into it is actually viable because you're not losing time just from getting bottom path. And all in all, just makes Sky Road a bit more tolerable. As for type changes, we've made power a little bit better, removing some of the power objects that were in the power path at the beginning of the lap and adding them to the one near the end and speed type is getting some slight nerfs. You got some cool character changes coming along. You might have noticed, but the fly types have been swapped around a bit. We're just changing the class that they fit into. The main reason for this is Tails actually, because as you may or may not know, Sonic, II, and Tails all have unique properties on their level two attack, which makes them very strong. So we feel that they should all be in the same class, so now they're all gonna be in late booster. We're also adding a brand new class to the game. It's going to be replacing early boosters and we're calling them combat characters. So it'll be Shadow, Cream, and Knuckles, just like the early boosters. And they'll still keep some of their early boost duration, although it'll be slightly lowered. And we're giving them extra stun time for their level 3 attacks and their boost chain modifier is increased by 3%. We are going to be looking at these guys' performances quite closely because we expect them to be broadly useful and we're not trying to have them over centralize anything. The other classes are mostly the same, some slight tweaks, a nerf to top speed, a buff to drift characters, nothing too big here and there. However, E10G is definitely the winner of this patch. So he's getting his top speed reduced just like the top speed characters, but he's also getting that extra boost chain modifier just like the combat characters, and unique to E10G, and unique to any character in Sonic Riders history, E10G will have plus 5 boost speed. I don't think I really need to say how cool this is and how strong it'll be. E10G will probably be useful on a lot of stages, we'll just have to see. As for some general changes, we've got a lot of quality of life stuff coming in this patch. Now, running will scale with your level, so it'll start at 150 speed, just like it was in vanilla, then go up to 160, and then 170 at level 3. And now you have the ability to jump while running. This is going to be huge for gears like Advantage S, and if you just fuck up and you're on speed type, now you can actually take your type most of the time. You'll still be punished a bit. You can't charge your jump. You'll just be able to do a regular jump, but it'll still help a lot. And for fly types, you'll now be able to go off a fly ramp while running. Just more changes that result in less auto loss. This one was highly requested, much to my dismay personally, but we've added a tornado lockout timer. So all that means is when you tornado, a 40 frame timer will start, and during those 40 frames, you can't place another tornado. And for those who don't know, Sonic Riders runs at 60 frames per second. For all you weirdos who like mission mode, we've changed all the shortcuts in mission mode to their vanilla speed. This is just to fix cases where the speed that we added on those stages made those missions very, very, very difficult to complete. So now all you runners out there can do things a little more consistently. 
But yeah, that's all we talk about in this video. If you have any questions about anything I said or about any of the other changes, I'll be happy to answer those in the comment section. And in a few days, we are going to have some more content on this channel. We're going to have some guides. They'll be more highly edited, more high production value. So I'd definitely like to hear your thoughts on the different styles of videos we're doing, which you prefer, whether you prefer these more lax videos or you want more highly edited stuff. But yeah, that'll be all from me today. DX is right around the corner. So be sure to join the Discord so you can get notified when we release. We'll also be dropping the trailer and the texture pack on the same day. If you're new, there's always people around willing to help you set up the game, learn the mechanics and the routing, you know, give you tips and anything else you might need. I'll see you there.